So welcome to our last lab of this semester, where we are going to visualize Twitter data by using a MongoDB chart. So MongoDB chart is similar to uh, Amazon QuickSight, that is a cloud-based uh, business analytic tool. Um, the advantage is that MongoDB chart is able to visualize those semi-structured data like Twitter data, which is in JSON format. Uh, so this is also more like a comprehensive lab that we will start from collecting tweets in Python, and next we will we will we will save the date the uh, the tweet data into a MongoDB, uh, which is a cloud-based service uh, semi-structured database. Um, next, we will we will use MongoDB chart to visualize those Twitter data. Okay. So let's first go to my GitHub page and also find out this notebook. Uh, we use this. We have used this, uh, this notebook in the previous lab. So let's use this one as as a standalone tool. Um, so let's just right click and also save this link as. So let's save that one to my download folder. And since I, I already downloaded, so I'm um, I'm going to cancel this download and I will use a downloaded one. And next. Let's go to the SageMaker. Um, so SageMaker is the cloud um, platform where uh, AWS hosts the notebook instances. Uh, so it is designed for machine learning. Uh, however, we are using it, uh, this one for, uh, for as our Python editor. So go to SageMaker. So let's first synchronize with our GitHub repository. So let's open the JupyterLab. OK, so for this instance, we already have linked to our um, uh, GitHub repository. So every time when we before we start to change something, so let's make sure that uh, we synchronize with the cloud uh, GitHub repository. OK, and next, let's open the notebook. And here we have this configure.ini file, so which contains uh, those connection information to our GitHub, uh, sorry, to our uh, MongoDB database, and also has uh, the uh, API keys that for the Twitter app. Okay, so this configure file has all the secrets that we need to make connections with MongoDB database, and also to call the Twitter APIs. Uh, so let's upload the downloaded uh, notebook. And let's call it lab 11. And let's see upload. OK, and let's start this one. And you can see that we are using the uh, Condor Python 3, which is uh, great. And uh, if you haven't installed those Python libraries, so you may need to install them again. If you already installed, you can skip those uh, process. So here, let's just uh, install it again. Uh, so just make sure that we do have those necessary Python libraries. OK, yeah, looks like uh, this instance didn't have the payment goal. Let's also see that one is already there. OK, and TwiPy is for the uh, streaming API. Uh, we may not use that, but let's just install it again. And Twitter is for the Tweet REST API. OK, next, let's import those necessary Python libraries. For this lab, we may not need to use all those Python libraries, but just uh, just import them so that we don't need to change anything in the notebook. And here, let's load the authorization info. Again, those authorization info is stored in this configure.ini file. So we all have our configure.ini file where we have those um, API keys, secrets, tokens, um, and also access secret, and also we have our connection information to the MongoDB. Okay, so let's read. 
Uh, so here we are going to connect to our MongoDB cluster. And remember that this is your database. Uh, so each of us has a different database uh, MongoDB cluster. So make sure that you switch this one to your database uh, because you don't have access to the other person's database. And here the collection name. So for this lab, let's create a collection called Lab 11. I would uh, highly recommend using different collections for different projects. So otherwise, you will, not, you will mess up those collected tweets. And let's also create index so that we can make sure all the tweets are unique. OK. Uh, so we're going to use the REST API only. So here, let's authorize this REST API. Uh, oh, sorry, this is stream API. So let's skip this one, actually. So let's skip the stream API part. And we're going to use REST API. So let's authorize the REST API. So because for stream API, we cannot define collection and keywords. OK, uh, for stream API, you can e you can delete you can define either keyword or the location. But for REST API, we can define the keyword and location. So let's authorize the REST API. OK, so this is where we need to define our queries. So for this lab, we want to collect tweets that are talking about COVID-19 in Virginia. So the queue is V. COVID-19. And a geocode, so we have we also need to switch change the geocode. So geocode is your start area. So in this case, our start area is uh, the state of Virginia. So um, the best way to find out the um, the coordinates of Virginia is I, I normally use Google Map. OK, uh, so here, if I open the Google map and you can see this is the Virginia um, state and also remember that for REST API, so it is more like you are drawing a circle. You define the, the central point and also you, you define the radius. OK, uh, so that means you know, your data may not be perfectly located within Virginia. So you may have some, some tweets that are outside of Virginia. And also, you may have also missed some tweet that sent out in Virginia, but not collected in your uh, in your data. So here, I, I, to simplify the data collection, so I'm going to use Richmond. So if I click Richmond, and I'm going to use the coordinates of Richmond. So if you go to URL, uh, you can see that the URL of the Richmond is this. Okay, that is latitude, longitude. So I just copy this one and go to my notebook and just paste that number. Okay, so that's a Richmond. And also you have to define the radius. So it is up to you. So so you the area, so how far away from Richmond. So you can imagine that you are drawing a circle. Okay. Um, so here, let's say I want 150 mile. Okay, probably that is too small, or oh, probably that is too big. But um, so just roughly guess, I will I will use 150. Okay, so that is the two parameters that we have to be very careful. So Q is defining the keywords, geocode is defining the location, and in REST API, the relationship is and. So, so that means we are going to collect tweets that are talking about COVID and also within that area. OK, so next, let's run the REST, uh, REST API to collect some tweets. So make sure that we define the count equals count, Q equals Q, and also geocode equals geocode. OK. Uh, so we do have several tweets that have been printed out. And remember that in each time, we can only get no more than 100 tweets by using REST API. OK, so I guess that is roughly uh, probably less than 100 tweets. And you can see all the tweets are sent out today. OK, um, and next, so if we want to get more tweets, we can use the tweet timeline. 
Um, however, we have to be very cautious about this part because we can easily reach our rate limitation of our APIs. So I would say that we run this one for a few seconds and we stop and we see how many tweets being collected. If we have more than 1000 tweets, then that's enough for this lab. So let's just run it for a, a, for a very short time period. Okay, we can see COVID is a very hot topic in Virginia. Okay, I think that's enough and uh, let me stop. All right. Okay, uh, let's say print and see how many tweets being collected. So let's run it. Okay, uh, <laughs> we have nine, 800. Uh, okay, so let's run it for a few seconds. Okay, and I guess that probably will be sufficient. Let's stop that. Okay, and now let's see how many tweets being collected. Okay, 2000. Okay, and that's that's fine. So that's perfect. Um, and also let's create index on the text field uh, because we are going to uh, if you like, you can also make queries based on the text of the Twitter. So let's create that index. Okay. Um, of course, if you like, you can also search uh, some keywords. Let's say if we search COVID. And I think we all have a lot of tweets because Essentially, that is a keyword that we used in searching the tweets. Okay, and if you want print uh, 10 tweets, we can do that. Okay, and of course, uh, if you want to visualize that in, in Pandas, we can also do that. Okay, so those are the tweets. And if you want to see that the favorite count. OK, and we can see that most tweets, they don't have any favorite count. OK, so that is a date collection part. So it's it is exactly what we did in the previous lab. But we we will we are not using stream API for this uh, lab. We are only using the rest API and also make sure that you define the right queue. A parameter and also the right geocode parameter, so that is Virginia. And before we finish this part, so let's make sure that we uh, update this new notebook to our GitHub repository. Okay, so that's lab 11. Make that commit and also push. which is success. So now if we go to our report repository of this class and we, are, we can see that our lab 11 is being uploaded. So later on, you can go come back and check how did you collect your tweets. OK, so now let's go to the next step, which is uh, we go to the MongoDB Atlas, that is the cloud MongoDB database. And we can see we just had a peak in read and also write. Okay, so that's because we just inserted a few number of tweets into MongoDB cluster. Remember, we only have 10 gigabytes, so we only purchased 10 gigabyte uh, storage for this class. So that's why that I mentioned that you should limit the number of tweets you collected. Um, and also we have uh, uh, one primary node and also two uh, reading node, which is not showing up here. OK, uh, so now let's go to the collections. So let's look at the tweets that we collected. OK, 
Uh, so now you can see in my demo database, I now have a Lab 11 uh, collection being created. So if I click that one, and you can see I have I do have more than 2,000 tweets, which is fine. And also the size is 10 megabyte. OK, so those are the tweets that we just collected. Um, you can also enable the filters, just as we did in the campus. Uh, you can also check the indexes. OK, you can see we have ID key and also we have a text key. Um, and also you can also run the aggregation pipelines. OK, so just as we did in the um, on campus. So for example, uh, we let's see do a match. We see that coordinates. is dollar not now I might have misspelled the coordinates okay we won't see the coordinates not now Okay, uh, looks like all the coordinates are now. That's interesting. Okay, so it looks like in my collected tweets, none of those tweets contains coordinates. And that's pretty interesting um, because I was planning to create maps based on coordinates. So let's look at places. So tweet also contains um, a key called a field called a place. Let's also see dollar not now colon <clears throat> okay so now we do have some tweets that uh, contain place information and let's see what places are there so here we're going to use a project um, place one Okay, so this is in Maryland, and this is also Maryland. Okay, um, okay, also Maryland. So, okay, so although I collected, I I set Richmond as a central point, but in uh, <laughs> it turns out I did collected some tweets that in, in in Maryland. So um, that that's fine because you know you cannot be very precise on your REST API keys. Alright. Um, so that is how you can make a very simple quick um, search on the tweet by using aggregation pipelines or you can use the find filter just as we did in the previous lab. However, so MongoDB also provides these charts service so that is a cloud-based uh, data visualization tool so let's use that one to to visualize our Twitter data so that will be easier okay and so if this is your first time so you have to go to the data resource and you have to add the data resource to uh, to the data resources so you have to add the data that you uh, collected So next, <clears throat> so we only have one cluster. Uh, and here, so I'm going to import lab 10 and also lab 11. So we are going to visualize the lab 11, uh, but uh, I'm also going to use lab 10 as a demo. So because I don't have the coordinates in the lab 11, so I'm going to use uh, the tweet of lab 10 also as a, a demo data source finish. Okay, so now I have the both uh, data source being imported. So on your side, you just need the lab 11. Okay, let's go to the dashboard and let's add our first dashboard. Uh, let's call it lab 11. And here we are going to create different chart. So just as we did on AWS QuickSight. So let's add our first chart. 
and we choose a data source. So let me choose lab 11 as a data source. And now you can see all the keys are here. And our first visualization is that I want you to create a line chart to show the number of trees being, being collected over time. Uh, so the time information is in this created at. However, right now it is a string format, so we can config, we can convert uh, the data format. So let's go here, click this dot, and let's convert type. And let's convert that one into date and let's save. So now you can see the symbol has changed from the string into the date format. And let's choose uh, the line chart. So let's create choose a line chart. And uh, we can use this uh, discrete, which is fine. And also for the X, let's put the created at. OK. And you can choose a bin. So do you want based on year, months, etc. So let's say we want to try the day of the week. And I want to see the number of trees being collected. So for the Y axis, I'm going to use bring ID to here. And I use count. OK, so that means how many trees are collected. And you can see because all the trees are collected on Wednesday, so that's why that there's only just one um, uh, day that's been showing up here. Uh, so if I choose that one to be hour, now you can see that the data has been collected at different hours. And You can also change like to the minute and also second if you like. Uh, so if you uncheck the beans, and you will see exactly that the number of tweets have been collected at a different time timestamp. Okay. Um, because I collected, uh, you can see uh, just I run the REST API for uh, less than one minute, I guess. So although I have 2,000 tweets being collected, so most of the tweets are collected uh, within the past uh, few hours. That has been posted within the past few hours. Uh, so that's why that if I choose day, um, there's just one sample point. But if I choose the hour, I can see that when those tweets are uh, being posted. Um, I, it is up to you. So if you want to uncheck the beans to see the exact number being collected, you can. Um, and also if you want to check beans and you can see the aggregated result that at different times. Uh, we can also make filters. So for example, I can collect tweets at, um, for specific time period. So for example, I want to collect tweets in the last one hour. OK, there's nothing. How about last three hours? OK, so there are a few tweets. So those are some filters you can add. Uh, let me uncheck the filters. Uh, we can also customize uh, on this chart. So for example, um, you can change the labels. So this I want to call it time. You can also change the date time format. So since now we are only showing the time, so uh, it's also the only the time format. Uh, you can also convert the time zone. So in the original tweet data, the time zone is in, is using the UTC time zone. So that's why you see why some people post tweet at 2 AM. So that is because that is in the UTC time zone. So let's convert that one into our local time zone, which is Eastern time. OK, so that hopefully will make more sense. We can see at uh, 8 AM, there is a peak that more, more people send out the tweets. Um, and also at uh, 10 PM, there are also more people send out tweets. So it looks like we are collecting tweets that sent out last night. Um, and also for the Y axis, you can also call it uh, number of tweets. 
So you can see it is uh, uh, updated here. Uh, you can also give the title. Okay. So for this chart, and we can save that one. So if you are happy, you can save that one. Uh, you can also change the color. So that is here. So if you want to use a different color, uh, you can also do that. OK. Uh, so that is our first uh, visualization that shows that number of tweets that collected over time. And you can see this has been added to our dashboard. Uh, we can also drag this one. So uh, you can change the size, etc. OK, uh, so this is where you can add the title and also descriptions. OK, so uh, so for this title, let's see COVID-19 in VA. Also, uh, we did collect tweets in different states, but most most tweets are collected in VA. We just do not have those coordinates. And this is for my lab 11. You can also add more descriptions. OK. So now let's continue. So let's add more chart. Our second one is that we're going to create a word cloud. So let's still use the, the lab 11. And let's create a word cloud. So let's go to text. You can see you can also choose the other type of the visualizations. And word cloud is here. And for the text, we're going to show the hashtags. Uh, so hashtags is within the entities. So let's find out entities, which is here. Uh, let's open expand entities, and we see the hashtags, URLs, and also mention users. So let's expand the hashtags, and we can see the text. Okay. So let's drag text into the text, and remember that text is a key of the hashtag document, which itself is a list. So we have to unwind uh, that list. OK. Uh, next, for the size, we want to count how many hashtags, how many times those hashtags has been mentioned in the tweets. So again, let's drag ID to the size and let's count. OK. So now we can see uh, COVID. Uh, OK, and I don't know why this one has been mentioned. OK. And we can also make that one to be not nicer so that we can we can give each hashtag a different color. So let's drag text into color as well. And we choose unwind. So now each text with ha will have a unique color. And you can see we have the warning that uh, this chart is not displaying the, all the data because the maximum query response is one, 100 documents. OK. Um, so if you have something that you are spe specifically interested, you can also make queries here so that you can fill, fill out more tweets. OK. So for example, here, let's use another query. Let's say we want just show the hashtags uh, from the tweets where uh, they have more than one favorite count. So let's say favorite count colon. And we are going to use dollar GT. So that stands for greater than one. And let's apply that filter. OK, so now we are only showing the hashtags from the tweets that has been favorite for more than one time. OK, uh, let's add uh, a title. So popular hashtags. And of course, you can also add more filters. So in addition to doing that query there, you can also add filters here. Uh, so for example, if you use created ad, uh, you, you need to convert that one into date format first. And you can also try, let's say, language. OK, so you can see if you want to fill out tweets that uh, in English only. OK, or you can try, let's say, uh, 
with another different language, French. Okay. Um, okay, so let's select everything so we don't use any filters. Uh, again, you can also uh, customize those uh, hashtags. For example, when you put the mouse over there, so uh, how do you want to visualize those? How do you want to show those labels? So for example, this one, I just want to show the text. And this one, I just want to show the count. OK, so you can also do that. OK, so let's save this one. And so you can also adjust uh, how your dashboard will look like. OK, so that is our second um, uh, chart. So let's add our third one. So for our third one, we are still using the Lab 11. Um, so we want to see that who are the most popular users. OK, uh, so who sent out the most number of the tweets? So we are going to use a, a bar chart so that by default it is the bar chart. And let's go to users. And we can see we have for the users, we have the username and also user ID. So if you go to lower, so you can see username and also user ID. So uh, let's put so let's put username uh, to the y axis. So username to the y axis. So those are the different categories. Um, let's put ID again to the X axis. So we are still going to use count. So here you can see that for each username, how many times that they are showing up in the in the tweets that we collected. That also means that uh, how many tweets being sent out from those different usernames. OK, uh, we can also limit. So you can see here we can also limit the result. Let's say that we want top 10 users. OK. Uh, you can also do that by using query, but also you can do that by using uh, field here. So here you can see we have the top 10 users. The first username is hashtag stay home, which makes sense. Um, OK, and also users. I'll, I just call it top 10 users. Uh, you can, of course, uh, enable filters and also you can customize, like use different colors. Um, you can also change the labels. So let's see the number of tweets. And for the username, so I just call it just use username. OK, and we can save it. All right, uh, you can also adjust uh, again. You can just like so to change that one into the format that you like. OK. Uh, next is we can also visualize the places based on the maps. So let's add the chart. OK, uh, so this time we are going to create a map showing the locations of the tweets. Uh, so I'm going to use the lab 11 first. Um, so let's say we we want we want to fill out the, the tweets that do have the place information. So let's first say place is not now okay and now let's see we go to the map geospatial let's say core plus map and let's find out the place uh, field so now we see for each uh, for the place field so we do have few tweets that have the place field and we have their full name of the place, the country code, and also uh, the coordinates of the place. So let's just drag the country code. And next, let's bring the tweet ID to the color. Okay, and we can say we do have 
uh, 14 tweets that contain the place information that is in the United States. Actually, that is in around uh, Virginia. Uh, many of them are in uh, Maryland. So, however, so since we do not have the tweets that contain the specific coordinates, so we cannot map the exact locations of the tweets. So if you remember that we did that one in the Atlas where we queried the location of the tweets um, uh, based on the coordinates field. OK, based on this coordinates field, but none of those tweets contain coordinates. So that's why we cannot display the exactly locations. So uh, let's just quite a map. I know this is not a and very exciting uh, map. That is because, again, we don't know the exactly coordinates. Uh, so let's save that one to the chart. OK, so that is just a country. Um, however, so I, I do want to give you another demo so that just in case, if your tweets, uh, if the correct tweets that contain coordinations, so how will that look like? So for example, that's why I'm using a lab 10 as a demo, because in lab 10, I do have a few tweets that contains coordinates. So let's filter that based on coordinates. OK, and the dollar not noun apply. OK, and now you can see the coordinate coordinates now has changed the symbol from the string into uh, geospatial data type and now if we go to the geospatial and uh, let's go to the scat plot and let's drag, drag the coordinates here okay this is from the uh, lab 10 which we used the stream API and also REST API to collect tweets talking about COVID and we can see that we do have several tweets that in Europe OK, that's talking about COVID. And we can also drag ID to indicate the size. OK, uh, we can see we have the three tweets from this place and also one tweet from this one and one tweet from this one, from this place. And we can also create a heat map, OK, so which is pretty nice. I mean, this is a case if your tweets, if the collect tweets do contain coordinates, okay, do contain the coordinates, then you can create heat map or scat, uh, scat map that you like. However, in my case, uh, my tweets, unfortunately, none of them contain coordinates. So from the 2000 tweets, none of them contain coordinates. Uh, so that's why I just created this map showing Okay, so they are they are all from U United States. Okay, so this is really up to you. So if your tweets contain coordinates, you can show the exact locations. If not, and also if some tweets contain place information, and you can just show the general uh, location that those are in United States. Okay, so that is my hashtag. Uh, if I'm happy with my hashtag, so there are several settings. So if you go to the settings, you can set that how frequently that your data set will be updated. So you can set that one to be one hour or one minute or every 30 days, etc. So suppose that you are using a streaming API, for example, that constantly collecting tweets and this refresh setting will make sense because every time every hour or every minute your data will be different so your data will be updated every hour or every minute whatever you set up here but in our case we use rest api so it's just one time stamp that we collected 2000 tweets and that's it we don't have a serverless uh, infrastructure uh, we don't have a serverless uh, program that support constantly updating the tweets so the setting does not make a lot of sense, um, but it's good to know that we, you can set up the refresh settings. Uh, next, you have decide the access. So 
do you want to share this one with everyone that in our class or do you want to uh, share this one with, with anyone so let's check this one so we want to see that anyone okay uh, we all need is able to see this uh, to see this state set um, let's uh, copy this URL and also let's uh, apply this change Uh, you may also notice that uh, there's a warning saying that um, uh, that your data set um, is not um, public yet. So don't worry. And I will give you, um, uh, I will change the settings on my set. So later on, so after you submit to your lab and uh, I will check the, the data source, uh, sources um, pretty quickly often and I will enable the external sharing for your data source. Um, so so once I enable that one, so uh, again, so here uh, you can copy this one and you can open a private mode and also you paste. So you will see that um, your data now is being able to view that by anyone. Okay, uh, so if you if you see some errors, seeing that your data is not accessible yet, don't worry, and I will give you the access later. Um, uh, change that on my side. Okay, so that is a URL that you need to submit on um, for this lab.